The EV revolution has given entrepreneurs the ability to make history and money. Elon Musk's wealth soared when Tesla shares rose. Let me introduce the Cybertruck. Many competitors are struggling in this rush to capture the moment. Many famous companies have failed, gone bankrupt, or struggled. Even established companies with automotive ambitions have given up. Over 30 enterprises have declared bankruptcy in recent years. Huge addressable EV market. In 2023, Tesla, which owned over 50% of it in the US, sold over 650,000 vehicles and earned $82 billion in vehicle sales and leasing revenue worldwide. EV sales were 8% of US new car sales that year. Their 2030 estimate is 46%, nearly 8 million automobiles. The business is not for the faint-hearted. Billions are needed. Applicants often underestimate capital costs, a complicated supply chain, factories, vehicle design, compliance with regulations, and distribution and servicing network are needed to deliver goods to customers. Why is starting an EV company so hard and so many fail? Let's check some important factors. Potential. Despite sales slowdowns, global EV adoption is expected to rise from 2.4% of new cars sold in 2019 to 61% by 2035. By definition, startups love large addressable markets. Venture capital pitch. First slide. Buses, trucks, motorbikes, and light-duty vehicles are included. Aircraft in the far future. Investment in EVs has increased in two years to $616 billion for 2027. This enthusiasm helped Tesla, the first major EV automaker outside Asia, succeed. Favorable government policies help market growth. Countries willing to decarbonize offer incentives, subsidies, and other benefits to help start. Tesla received over $5 billion in zero-emission vehicle credits since 2021. Every time they sell a fuel-burning vehicle, automakers must buy credits from Tesla or other EV or plug-in makers. In some states, China has the fastest electric vehicle growth. Many government policies promote that. So some of the sites where new enterprises are popping up are pushed by the government, while others are entrepreneurs trying to capitalize on the shift to electric. However, this period of rapid growth and promise has seen some high-profile failures. Apple, one of the world's top firms by market capitalization, dropped its Titan automobile project. The British company known for bagless vacuum cleaners, Dyson, abandoned its electric car plans because they weren't profitable. Both businesses had great profitability and return on capital. I sort of agree. You need considerable innovation to enter the automotive. Indifference. Bringing a car to market requires technical and design skills, execution, obtaining manufacturing space and suppliers, facing strict and complex laws, and introducing something new. Startups offer fresh start possibilities, even if you have an advantage. You must learn all these difficult things the large automakers do. You must learn design and supply chain building, lean manufacturing. You must learn to sell, repair, maintain, and provide after sales service. Above all, it requires finance, money. Focus on capital returns, not stock prices. Actual capital returns aren't good. This industry is capital intensive and competitive. Ford and GM had mid-single to low double-digit returns on invested capital for 11 of their 15 years as public companies. Tesla's ROI was negative. Straightforward. Companies run out of cash. The Fisker cash crunch was old-fashioned. Some of that was attributable to the capital intensity of automaking, but also company blunders. Capital shortages are automakers' major issue. That may seem clear. Of course, every firm faces it, but beginning an automobile is expensive. You're too billion to buy your first car. Some don't have $2 billion. Even with $2 billion, success isn't certain. That's just the beginning. You must move like a shark or die. So the next $2 billion and the next $2 billion must be raised. Big Rivian and Lucid both destroyed $10 billion. Interesting to see other little firms raise $1 billion or $2 billion. They consider that sufficient. Not even close. Many startups that went public utilizing SPACs have this issue. Public shell companies unite with private businesses, such as EV firms, to form SPACs. Through the merger, the private corporation goes public. The world has no venture capital firm that will give EV startups billions. The only way to raise that much money is to go public. SPACs had advantages over IPOs for EV firms. Instead of real revenue, you might go public with expected revenue. These enterprises could use markets to raise funds, according to the SPAC pledge. Not the story. Not like retail investors poured money into Tesla. They didn't learn and others invested as needed than debt and other things. Pre-revenue startups shouldn't be public. Pre-revenue companies struggle to keep ahead of the bow wave and attract investors willing to invest billions in a firm. Manufacturing. To start the budget, where are those billions going? It costs 500 million to 1 billion to establish a factory and tool it. 
200 million to 500 million to tool suppliers, and 250 million to 500 million to produce products. The building has fixed costs, factory management, and tooling. After building and tooling a factory, you must create a set number of automobiles to cover fixed expenditures. The parts seller will say, I have this high fixed cost. It costs $50 million to build 200,000 cars for you. Only 20,000 cars are requested. I need my money, but we don't have any. You don't get parts. Keeping everything operating while waiting to launch vehicles requires $100 to $200 million a year. After launching, you need more growth funds to build the second vehicle and maybe a second plant. Companies take different approaches. Vertical integration means doing everything yourself, or almost so. Outsource part most of the work. Some use donor vehicles, which are repurposed vehicles or parts from another manufacturer, such as chassis or powertrains. On their endurance pickup truck, Lordstown started with a donor body. Elms began with a Chinese vehicle. This can save you from building something from scratch, but you can only alter the car so much. The asset light model, used by Fisker, involves outsourcing automobile production to suppliers or contract manufacturers. Paying an experienced outside firm to produce a car in a factory already built may seem like a good deal, but it adds up. According to the Lix partners Mark Wakefield, bringing a vehicle model to life can take two to four times the projected hours. Nobody designs it once, and it's right. Electric vehicles are exempt from pollution laws, but they must also follow many other rules including the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. Because FNESS may murder people instantly, their entry barriers are aggressive and severe. A car must also be refined enough to drive comfortably. Vibration and driver important issues have intricate interdependencies. Lutness, vibration, and harshness are what McDuffie means. Car makers must ensure all parts fit flawlessly. If not, all three become insufferable. Every successful car maker constantly fine tunes. Tesla may do less, which may upset some. Not an excellent fit and finish. For now, people don't care about the gaps and bad appearance since they enjoy the power. They adore software and big screens. Something must motivate you to acquire this car. Many startups were attempting to be first, therefore there wasn't much innovation that made consumers feel stylistically different. Some struggled due to market delays. By then, there were other similar vehicles on the market, and they weren't the first or only game in town. This is very stressful, possibly the biggest issue for any EV or car beginning. Need to change everything and be distinctive, but there's a lot of tried and true in existing vehicle designs, approaches, and validation processes that you risk by not doing. You can cut that bill by being less innovative and different, but that gives people less reason to care about your product and appreciate you. Vertical integration. Their formula guarantees success. Our data indicates EV demand slowing. Tesla missed even the worst first quarter 2024 delivery expectations. Nearly 35% of shares have declined since January. Rivian's first quarter deliveries were better than projected. Today resembles the early motor industry. There were hundreds of tiny businesses, especially in Detroit, the business center. Within a decade, most of those died, and only a few survived. The main three of today are GM, Ford, and the leftovers of Chrysler, which amalgamated with Fiat and Peugeot to form Stellantis. Some consolidation happened as automakers achieved economies of scale for car manufacture, while vertical integration brought suppliers inside. General Motors consolidated Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, and the now-defunct Oldsmobile and Pontiac, but it also brought many suppliers in-house. Alfred Sloan, GM's iconic CEO, joined through his supplier acquisition and progressed through the ranks. In the second part of the 20th century, automakers spun off their supplier businesses to streamline production and focus on the final product. This tendency seems to be reversing. World-leading vertically integrated companies Tesla and BYD. It's better, they decide. Do it yourself gives you more control and the correct parts for a car. Do it yourself gives you greater freedom. However, it is very expensive upfront. They may be repeating an industry trend, but their market share and survival rate imply they will be around in another decade when many of their competitors have failed. Even though many new enterprises are being founded and delayed, history shows it won't last. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. See you in the next video.